here's a beautiful histopathological picture showing the right supraclavicular lymph node here. Now you can visibly see that this is the architecture of an enlarged lymph node which is disrupted and is partially diffuse, partially interfollicular infiltration with Reen-Sternberg cells looking like owl's eyes. There are also multinucleated Reed-Sternberg cells here and some mononucleated Hodgkin cells. Now if you look at this picture, this is another microscopic image of the lymph node which has been stained with anti-CD3 antibody and clearly shows CD3 positive T cells surrounding the CD30 positive Reed-Sternberg cells. Here's another image with HNE staining. Here you can see that the Reed-Sternberg cell is clearly seen in the center of this image with two large nuclei which look like owl's eyes. Here's another beautiful histological image of the Hodgkin's lymphoma which is stained with CD30 immunostain. In this image we can see a Reed-Sternberg cell at the center of this image. CD30 is a surface marker which is expressed on Reed-Sternberg cells and it stains red. In this image we can see numerous basophilic lymphocytes and are visible with the eosinophilic tissue. In the center of this image is a typical Reed-Sternberg cell with two nuclei. The nuclei are surrounded by a cytoplasmic halo that creates a characteristic owl's appearance. Here you can clearly appreciate a popcorn cell which is identifiable as a large lymphocyte with a pale multilobular nucleus and there are numerous small lymphocytes that are visible throughout the image. These popcorn cells are typically seen in the nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma. You can see the numerous lymphocytes all over the slide. Here's the chest x-ray and we can clearly appreciate hilar and left pulmonary nodular shadows which are visible and there's also a discrete widening of the superior mediastinum with a masked aortic arch. These findings are evident with malignant lymphoma with mediastinal hilar and pulmonary involvement. Here's the chest CD scan with contrast medium. Right here you can see the right brachiocephalic vein at the transition to the superior vena cava. The whitish contrast in the lumen is contrast medium. Now here you can see that there is mediastinal lymphoma in the upper posterior mediastinum at the right paratracheal stripe. Now this is the trachea with the lumen being black which indicates the presence of air. Here is the left subclavian artery and left brachiocephalic vein. Now here's an image showing nodular sclerosing Hodgkin's lymphoma. Lymphocyte-rich nodules can be seen surrounded by collagen fibers, which gives the nodular consistency. There is diffuse partially interfollicular infiltration of large tumor cells. Now these large tumor cells are the Reed-Sternberg cells. If magnified further, you can clearly appreciate the presence of the classic Reed Sternberg cells, which look like owl's eyes. Now, here's an image showing mixed cellularity Hodgkin's lymphoma, where there are different types of cells, which includes the macrophages, lymphocytes, and other inflammatory cells, which are all present as a mixed layer. Now, in this image, there's an absence of fibrous bands in the mixed cellularity type of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Here's another image which shows Reed Sternberg cells. Here you can see multinucleated cells. This is a plasma cell with number of nuclei, and you can clearly appreciate that the borders of this plasma cell are not uniform. Now, here's a schematic overview of potential mechanisms for the development of B cell non Hodgkin type of lymphoma. Now, as you can see, that there's Naive mature B cells, which is a cell of origin, which can undergo a translocation 1114 to form the mantle cell type of lymphoma. The naive mature B cells, when exposed to an antigen, it forms antigen experienced mature B cells and it can get transformed into CLL or SLL. When this cell undergoes a somatic mutation, it forms into a central blast followed by a centrocyte and then a marginal zone B cell. At any stage of this development in the germinal center of the B cell, if the central blast 
undergoes a CMIC or expression, it forms Burkitt lymphoma. If the centroplast undergoes a BCL6 expression, it forms the diffuse large B cell lymphoma. On the other hand, if the centrocyte undergoes a 1418 translocation, it forms follicular lymphoma. And if the marginal zone B cell undergoes a BCL10 overexpression, it forms marginal zone lymphoma. The marginal zone B cells can either get converted to a plasmoblast or can form a memory B cell. Memory B cell often undergo a transformation to form CLL or SLL. The chronic lymphocytic leukemia or the small lymphocytic lymphoma. In the post-germinal center of the B cell, the plasmoblast can undergo a BCR signaling to form again a diffuse large B cell lymphoma of the ABC type. Eventually, the plasma blasts get converted into a plasma cell, and there's a propensity of the plasma cells to undergo modifications to form multiple myeloma. Here is a picture showing the lymph nodal regions in lymphoma. It can be seen in the cervical, supraclavicular, occipital, or preauricular area, the infraclavicular area, the high limb, or the axillary pectoral regions can also be affected. The mediastinal region occupying the prevascular, pulmonary, paratracheal, pretracheal, saccharinal, and posterior mediastinal lymph nodes can also be affected. Hodgkin's lymphoma can be seen in the spleen. It can evolve in epitrochlear, mesentric, iliac, inguinal, or femoral lymph nodes, or popliteal lymph nodes, or paraerotic lymph nodes. So, in a sense, any of the lymph node region can be involved in patients having Hodgkin's lymphoma. Here is an image of immunostained for CD30 in Hodgkin's lymphoma. You can see clearly how immunostaining for CD30 is demonstrating a strong membrane and a paranuclear staining and a weaker cytoplasmic staining of Hodgkin cells. Here is a zoomed in version of the previous picture which shows immunostaining for CD15 in Hodgkin's lymphoma. Immunostaining for CD15 demonstrates strong memory and paranuclear staining of the Hodgkin cell. Now here is a PET scan image showing increased fluorodeoxyglucose uptake in lymph nodes in the neck and the mediastinum. The pathology was consistent with Hodgkin's lymphoma in this particular case. Here is an axial CD image demonstrating numerous enlarged supraclavicular nodes bilaterally. Now, some of the cutaneous manifestations of Hodgkin's lymphoma can be seen in these images here, which show secondary skin lesions in Hodgkin's lymphoma. That concludes our discussion on Hodgkin's lymphoma. We look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you for watching.